Excellent. So, everybody, uh, I've got some admin to do before we get into all of this. So I am missing my very capable assistant this morning. Uh, she's very pregnant and very ill. Uh, please pray for her. Um, she's really struggling. and She's in bed at the moment, feeling very sorry for herself. So, do I have any volunteers to come up and be my able assistant today? Oh, thank you very much. A round of applause for the young man here. Okay, so if you're new here, um, if you've not been to the church before, um, essentially what we are doing is we are doing what we call growth track class. It's a series of three or four classes, um, three of which are like in a classroom, one of which is a more of a training-based class. Uh, and the point and process of this is to see people become authentic disciples, devoted to God. So it doesn't matter if you're not a Christian, if you are a Christian, if you've been a Christian for 10 minutes or for 20 years. Um, this class today is class 201 and it's about developing essential habits. Now what we are required to do is to take of your details so we know who has completed this class. Because if you missed class 101 last week, then you'll be able to catch up on class 101 next month when we start running these classes after our regular Sunday morning service. But this is the first time that we have taught these classes to the church. So we wanted everybody that is part of the church or even not part of the church to be involved in this process from the outset so that in the future, when somebody comes through those doors for the first time and they say, what's this growth track thing all about? You can say with confidence, I've done it. This is what it's about. Does that sound good? Yes. Yes. Excellent. So my able-bodied assistant, can you pass out one of those to everybody, please? Um, and we've got some pens as well. You might need some pens. So do we have another assistant who can be a pen giver out? Come on in, Grace. Be a pen giver out. Oh. Sorry, maybe next time. <laughs> so if you need a pen, wave your hand in the air like you just don't care. So many people care too much. They care too much. Okay, so as those are going out, that's a good question. It's the 23rd. The 23rd. So, last, last week as well, um, we did Class 101. And Class 101 was all about um, the, the, the membership of the church. What you need to know in order to help you to become a member of the church. So we talked about last week why we exist. We talked about the church government structure, how we operate. And we also talked about our membership covenant. Now, last week, um, we, we didn't have the membership covenant written out. So what I want to do this week as another part of the admin is if you would like a membership covenant to, again, wave your hands in the air like you just don't care, and my very lovely assistant will come to you with um, uh, a membership covenant. Thank you very much. So if you'd like to wave your hands in the air, if you want to be a member of the church, if you didn't complete class 101 last week and you've got no idea what I'm talking about, then please don't feel like under any pressure or compulsion to, to have to take a membership covenant. All right, um, You can catch up on the classes, like I said, next month and we are hopefully um, going to put them online very, very soon. Uh, once we've completed the classes, we're going to put them online so you can just listen in. Um, right over there. So, one right at the back. So, who has completed their little um, details card? If you could just flap them about, and then my able assistant is going to collect them. You, you, you weren't, didn't know you were signing up for this much work, oh, did you? Go it is very good, thank you. Yes, if we could all sign those, those forms, that would be great. Um, but again, like I said, there's, there's no compulsion for anyone to have to do this. This is, if you want to, to be known to have completed the class. It is good. It is good. I have more pieces of paper to come out to you guys. I know, it sounds very exciting. It's literally, this... Uh, it, this will normally, okay, take place in one of the classrooms at the back. 
but we have to like do it this way. Just you know, just pretend that we're in class and you're sitting around a table, and uh, just like going back to school, isn't it, Grace? Is it just like going back to school? Maybe not. No, no, that looks says it all. So adults, this is not like school. I've just got it straight from the horse's mouth. This is not like school. It could be better than school, even. Best days of your life, weren't they? Who ever made that up? <laughs> he was just trying to, yeah, he never went to school. He was just trying to encourage his kids, like, to learn. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's a silly thing to say. Anyway, less of the jokes. So, able assistant, if you could start handing those out, please. That would be awesome. You can give some back. <laughs> I do apologise if this is your first time here, this is slightly awkward. You can read it today if you want, just not while I'm talking. <laughs> no, you, these, okay, so what, what's coming over to you now is a, a little booklet. This is the, the booklet for the class in here. We're going to cover a lot of ground today, and there's a lot of scripture, and we thought it was going to take an awful long time to go through this, so hopefully, hopefully, I reckon that actually we'll still be done about midday, which is pretty normal, because we only did two worship songs, okay? So we want to get class out on time, uh, as usual. So these booklets have got all the scriptures in. I won't read out all of the scriptures um, that we're going to cover today because you've got them in front of you. You can take this away, read it at your leisure, peruse it every morning if you like. You know, it's, it's a fantastic resource. It'll tell you everything that you need to know to be a healthy Christian. Copy, can I ask? Could someone fill that up for me, please? Could you do that for me, please? Thank you very much. Right, so how are we all doing, class? Have we filled out our forms? Yeah. Have we done our membership covenants? Yeah, have you waving them in the air so they can be collected up? Yeah, yeah please hold them up so they can be collected up, and then we can... And then we don't have to harass you, thank you very much, we don't have to harass you for this class again until next year. Okay, so most of us have done that. Are we attentive and listening class? Yeah? Or have we got our head stuck into a booklet? Yes, thank you very much. That's, that sounds good, that, I like that. So from now on, if you please refer to me as Sir or Mr Baxter, that would go down really well. <laughs> yes, I don't get treated this well at home. So, what I'm going to go through today, uh, essentially, some of you know all of this stuff that we're going to cover today like so well, and it's part of your daily lives and part of your daily routine, and you're going to have a little lawyer in your head as I'm speaking going, oh, oh, do I have to listen to this? Oh, I'll just have to switch off, or oh, I'll just... I'll just not listen, I'll think about dinner later on, or what I've got to do tomorrow morning, I've got so much cleaning to do, it's, it's, it's insane. You want to see our house, I know, it's, it's horrible, so I'm, I'm trying to put all that to one side. Um, and, and the reason for that uh, is because some of you have grown up in church, and you've been to church a billion times, and this is stuff that you've all heard before. However, if you've not been to church, and you're not a Christian, this could be brand new to you. However, new to church or old to church, these are the essential habits that we need to be healthy Christians, actually. And so, like we hear that we should never ever get sick of hearing the gospel, well then likewise, we should never ever be sick of like growing in our spiritual health, yeah? There's always something to be gleaned, to be taken from any class like this, there's always something new that we could learn and pick up on and say, man, I need to incorporate that into my life because that is something I'm struggling with, that is something I don't do very well, that is something that I'm feeling challenged about. So I pray that you guys, A, get inspired and B, get challenged by today's class. 
Two weeks ago, um, I taught on the values of this church. Can anybody who's not a leader of this church tell me what those four values are? They are they're, they're four eyes, just for a just clues. Chuck it out there. Intimacy. Intimacy. Mission. Intentional mission. Mission. Who's not a leader of this church? <laughs> Who's the, Investment. Investment. Opportunity. Opportunity. <laughs> You're all welcome in church today. <laughs> Just to throw that out there. It's inclusivity. Inclusivity. Okay. So those are our four eyes. So today he comes under the second of our four eyes, investment. This is part of our investment into your lives to help you grow in your faith. Um, for me, uh, so far this journey has been, I've really enjoyed this. I mean, I've been a part of this from the beginning. Um, we've talked about this for what feels like months and months and years and years. And we've got to a place now where we're like, okay, we're on the bus, the bus is going somewhere, and very soon we're going to stop at our first stop Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna switch gears again, and we're gonna get back into church as we all know and love church. However, just to recap the journey so far, we've talked about the vision of this church, the fact that we want to fill this place with people just worshiping God, yeah. just just wanting just to to raise their hands and to give their hearts and to be generous and just to to, to want to make a difference in the town, in the nation, in the world in which we live. That is part of it. And then, of course, once we've filled this, we'll go to multiple services. And then, of course, the pastor has a dream and a vision to plant other campuses out of this place. Right now, you look around and you think, man, we need to fill this half-empty hall already. But, man, this is the beginning. We are operating a bit like a church plant. We are wanting to like start at ground zero and put our all into reaching people with the gospel. Because that is what we're all about, right? This is what we want to be doing as a church. And we have been doing that. Yet the, the phrase that's cropped out again and again in the teaching is that we've always been very organic with it. You know, people come in and we say, hi, how are you? Love you. It'd be nice to catch up. Yeah, I'll text you in a week. Or maybe next week. Man, when I've got time, we'll meet up and we'll grab a coffee and uh, let's go out. And, and it is great, it's fine, and, and we can build friendships like that. I came in as a part of this church ten, over 10 years ago now, and I've, I've managed to stick around and, and become a part of the fabric of this church, which is great. So it's worked. I am living proof of the fact that it's worked. However, moving forwards, we, we recognise that we haven't been organisationally structured uh, well enough to be able to invite people to become a part of the family so that they truly feel like you belong here. Okay? It's a prophetic statement we've got on the wall that when you walk through that door, hopefully one of the first things you see is that you belong here because you do. Yeah? We are a family. You have a place to belong. You have a part to, to play. You, you, you have a, an opportunity to serve not just the greater body of Christ, but the world in which we live. We heard last week how some of us can be like a tiny little cog in a great big machine, and sometimes we feel like a tiny little cog in a great big machine, because all I do is I clean the toilets and I sweep the floors. Or all I do is serve tea and coffee. Or all I do is play the guitar on a Sunday morning. Or all I do is put chairs out, put chairs away, or whatever. But it takes... Church takes and requires each of those people and each of those jobs to be done so that when you come through that door, whether you're serving or not, you're like, oh, I'm home. Because none of us like walking into a house that is a right state, do we? I know, maybe some of us do. I don't like walking into my house when it's a right state, when there's a stack of washing up there that needs to be done, and like the kids' toys are all over the floor. It's just part of life, but it doesn't mean that I like it. Now, we want to be able to invite guests and family members to the same place to feel at home and to feel comfortable and to be like, yeah, okay, this is something that I can be a part of, this is something that I want to do. For me, recently, 
Like, to, to use this phrase, so please don't call me a heretic or anything, but the stars have aligned, okay? <laughs> the stars have aligned for me. I've recently been reading uh, Charles Finney's autobiography, uh, amongst other, other things, and I listen to an awful lot of podcasts. I'm a postman. I'm out there a lot. I listen to a lot of content. And everything just seems to be around what we are doing right now as a church. I feel like we have got this great, great opportunity as a church to really make a difference right now. But what it requires is for us to be healthy and it requires us to make great sacrifice. And if you're not willing to do that, well, that's fine, actually. You can just be along for the journey. But if you want to be a part of that, man, let's step up. Because this is going to be some hard, hard work in order for us to really make a real difference not just a bit of a difference. So, part, uh, just a, a quick story, just before we get into the real teaching, I'm going to buzz through the teaching, but just a quick story. Is I once heard a story of a guy called Frank Beeler who's part of a church in America called Elevation Church. Now, this story is not a unique story. There are churches all over the world where this happens, okay? But this guy was a president of an insurance company in America, and he was a young bloke. He, was like, he became the president at the age of 23. So he's a pretty savvy guy. He's an intelligent young man, and he's going places, and he's doing really well for himself and his family. However, on the weekends, he decides to join a church called Elevation Church because it's a, it's a new church, it's a new startup. At the time, it's been around for maybe 10 years now, but at the time, it was a new startup, fresh new church, fresh new vision, and he, was, he said, all right, I am willing to serve in this church, I'll do whatever it takes. Do you know what it took? It took the guy getting up at four o'clock on a Sunday morning to go to church to do the setup because I was in a portable facility. He would set up, and then he'd go home across the city, pick up his family, and then come back to church and serve again. And then he'd take his family home, And then they put all the stuff away at the end of the day. That's a long day. I don't know what time they finished. It might have been dark. But getting up at four in the morning to come and serve in church, is that by mad? Is he insane? No. He's willing to see the vision fulfilled. Amen. And do whatever it takes. Now, we're not asking you to get up at four in the morning. I'm just asking you to listen. I'm just asking you to listen. So, so class, you can open of your workbooks now if you like to page one and we will look at habit one which is Bible study and prayer. Okay, Bible study and prayer. Um, some of you don't know, but I'm, I'm, the, I'm the youth pastor here in this church. I'm part of the team that ministers to the youth uh, and the young people. And uh, one of the most common things that I, I get asked and get to deal with is people come up to me and they say, man, I just, I'm not feeling God anymore. Like, I don't feel like he's with me. I don't, I don't feel like God loves me. And I, I say to them, have you been reading your Bible? No. Have you been praying? No. Well, what do you expect then? <laughs> like, seriously, you know, we gain revelation from his word and we gain intimacy through prayer. And if you're not here on a Sunday morning, you're not in word, corporate worship where we can experience his presence and his joy and his love and peace in our lives. What do you expect? So the first habit, I wouldn't say it's the most important habit, but it is first, is Bible study and prayer. Okay, so a vibrant relationship with God is sustained through Bible study and prayer. So how do I get more from my Bible? Uh, Point number one, I must accept its authority. Yeah, the the Bible is our authority. Not if you're, you know, a surgeon, then you need to go to surgical college and stuff like that. You know, um, if you're a teacher, then you need to go to university to be a teacher. But for our lives... For our spiritual lives, for our personal lives, we have to accept the Bible as our authority. And when it says something that we don't like, 
We must just accept that we don't like it, but it's still our authority. It is still the very thing that brings us closer to God and makes us more like Jesus. Now, of course, they didn't have personal Bibles when the early church first started. But they clung on to the teachings of Jesus as an oral tradition, and they had the writings of the early church fathers, and they had the letters of Paul that were going around the churches. So they still had scripture. They still had eyewitness accounts. They still had the authority of the words of Jesus in their lives. And today we are blessed and privileged that someone built a printing press that we can own and hold in our hands and read for ourselves this very book that is just amazing, absolutely incredible. So we should accept it as our authority. And we need to receive what we hear, what we read, with an open heart. Like I said, we may not like it, but we need to receive it with an open heart and be willing to subject ourselves to it and not be closed off. Otherwise, we just become very religious. We become very pharisaical of, I know that, I know that, I don't need to hear that again. I read that once years ago. It means nothing now. My circumstances have changed. I'm older. What? No, we just always need to read it with an open heart and a prayerful heart and say, Lord, what are you trying to say to me through this text right now? I said at the beginning that even a teaching like this, we might have a little lawyer in our head saying, oh, I don't need to hear this, this is basics, these are just you know, fundamental teaching, I, I, I know all this stuff. And we can take that same attitude into our Bible time, into our Bible reading. But we shouldn't, we can't do that, we can't afford to do that. Because we might miss something that is so pertinent and so relevant to our lives right now, and it, we could get skewed off course. We need to be able to respond to God's word with obedience. No one likes that word obedience. It's not something that we enjoy. When my wife asked me to make a cup of tea and I'm sitting comfortably watching Strictly Come Dancing on a Saturday night, I don't want to get out. I didn't say that out loud, did I? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't want to get out of my sofa and go and put the kettle on and make a cup of tea, but I love her, so I do. Oh no, it's heartwarming, isn't it? Yeah. But it's true. We, we do these things because we love the person that we're with. And if we love a friend, then we will, will you know, obey them, you know, to a, to a degree, of course, um, and want to honour them with our actions and with, with what we do and say. So, God... Our Heavenly Father is the one that's called us into this loving relationship with Him. Uh, and if you don't know Him today, then I, I want to invite you to be a part of the family and to experience the love of God in your own life. It's not just a horrible thing to obey God. It's, it's liberating, truly liberating. Uh, I must absorb its truths. We need to spend time just kind of thinking over and absorbing it into our being. Being raised in a Christian family, as some of you no doubt were, it's probably been a lot easier to absorb the truths of the Bible because you hear them time and time again from your parents and going to Sunday school and, and going to church and being around other Christians and, and all your life. It's just part of you. You don't even know how or why you know these things. You just do. You know, people might say to you, man, you've always been so kind and generous. Why is that? I don't know. I've just, I've just grown up this way. You know, my parents modelled it to me and so I do it and whatever. But for some of us, we've not had that in our lives. So we need to intentionally absorb the truths of the Bible. We need to work a bit harder at it in order to get it into our, our being, into the seat of who we are. We need to be hearing God's word through the preaching and the teaching. And that's why Sundays and connect groups are so important to us. Because we come on a Sunday morning and we hear the word of God taught to us and preached to us and we hear it. And then we can do something about it because now we know it, hopefully. And we've got to read God's word. 
Spending time in our daily devotions, getting into the scriptures. I don't know what your daily devotions look like, but for me, I get up in the morning and providing everything goes swimmingly well and the children are well behaved, I, I sit down and I, I read my Bible um, while I'm eating my breakfast. Like Smith Wigglesworth once said, he used to read his Bible before every meal because he wanted to, to feed himself spiritual food before he consumed actual food. And I've taken that truth on board and it's something that I've tried to do in my own life, particularly in the mornings. But if that doesn't happen, then I'll try and grab a moment in my day, if I'm walking along or if I'm like, you know, posting someone's letter or whatever, just to spend just a couple of minutes in my YouVersion Bible app, because we can all have the Bible on our phones these days, and we can just dip into it, and we can just read a couple of verses, and it, there's nothing wrong with just reading a couple of verses, it's, that's all the time that you have. But just to read a couple of verses, and to think about that, and just to be like, okay, God's speaking to me today. We need to study God's Word. I'd really recommend that people go out and buy themselves a Bible with a commentary in it, a study Bible with, with some extra bits in there. This Bible was bought for me uh, before I was a Christian, okay? Um, I, I got it, it's a funny story. I, I came and I cleaned this church for three weeks because the regular cleaner at the time, uh, you know, couldn't do it. And I wasn't a Christian. I was just dating the pastor's daughter. And I thought, do you know what? I'll get my feet under the table. They'll like me for this because I'll, I'll do them a favour and I'll clean the church. And I thought I'd get a few bob out of it. I didn't. I got something much more valuable, actually. But at the time, I didn't think so. But I got a Bible and I started reading this sucker. And man, it helped to change my life so much and it's got little footnotes in it and I'm a geek and I like footnotes it's oh man anyway moving on <laughs> study the Bible memorise God's word now personally this is something I'm not very good at right? I, I, can, I can tell you Bible stories I can tell you roughly where they are but I'm not one of those people that says oh Ezekiel 38 verse 4 Blah de blah, because I don't know it. I'm terrible like that, so please don't quiz me. But, you know, I, I've, I know the story, I've got it. it. The stories are in my heart, but I do need to practice and get better at being able to memorise scripture. I envy people like Pastor Tony who got up and told us that scripture out of John just earlier, and he, I don't know if he just read it or not, but man. Sunday, Sunday, exactly. Growing up in God's family, man. So memorise the word and meditate on God's word. I've already spoken about that a little bit, but think about it over and over and over and over. Okay, Go away from here. Read some of these scriptures and don't just go home and think, oh, I've got to cut some potatoes up and stick a joint in the oven and I've got a hoover and all. Just think about what you've heard. Oh, I've heard class 201 today. What a fantastically well-taught class that was by Jim. I really enjoyed that. I might come back and listen to next week. You should come back and listen to next week. Next week's going to be outstanding. So, point number three is I must apply its principles. None of this is any good to you unless you do it. Is it? No. It, right? We can have all the knowledge in the world. We can know our Bible inside out. We might be able to recite verses just like Doc Cotton out of EastEnders. I know. It's a throwback for some of us. Maybe not. So, but we might be able to like, do all of that and it is, there's no good whatsoever unless we actually do it. Because it's by doing it that we grow. It's by doing it that we mature. It's by doing it that other people say, Man! Look at your life. Why? Why? And you can say, because I love Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, a couple of little points that we've got in here is to gather one truth from your reading to reflect on and to record what you learn in a journal or share it with someone. Yeah. It's really good to share what we've learned. The prayer part, the talking with God, Okay, uh, in my daily prayer time, I am giving devotion to God. Our, our prayer time should be a, a matter of, of sacrifice. Yeah, where we don't just, you, you know, we're not just, there's nothing wrong with just washing up and praying. Don't get me wrong. However, 
Real, deep, intimate prayer can't happen whilst you're washing up. Real, deep, intimate prayer can't happen when we're driving along. We need to, like Jesus said, go into our rooms, shut the door and pray. Now, I'm not the best prayer in the world. However, I do try and spend some quiet time alone with God and just give him my heart. Because he deserves it. He, he bought my life. It's no longer my own. The least I can do is spend some time with him. We need to be getting direction from God. Just like we had in the worship earlier when Pastor said, let's just have a moment of quiet and stillness and hear the voice of our Father speaking to us. Yeah, it's not just about, oh God, I love you, I love you, and, and you're so good, and you're so great, because that's just a one-way communication. It's not a one-way communication to be in relationship with somebody. It's a two-way thing. We need to be hearing his voice. This is how we got our vision as a church. This is how we got our mission, because we spent time reflecting and listening and saying, God, what is it that you want? For us, as a people, we can stand with confidence knowing that where we're going is what God has spoken to us. We need to grow by praying. We grow in our relationship with God. Just like how we, we spend time with our friends and family members, if we spent no time with them, we'd soon fall out of touch. I know that for many of us, we've got friends that we grew up with and you're still in contact, like on Facebook, or you give them a phone call now and again, or occasionally you might go out for a coffee. And you go, how are you doing, Mike? Yeah, I'm really good. Oh, do you remember the good old days? Because you've got nothing else to talk about apart from the good old days. Your relationship isn't current anymore. And you might have had great experiences with God back in 1996 when I went on a mission trip and we saw people set free and people were healed on the streets and it's not happened for 20 years. Well, it was the good old days, wasn't it? We need to be spending time with our Father consistently to grow in our relationship with Him. We can use the model that Jesus gave us. It's not just for brand new Christians when we teach them the, 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 the prayer that Jesus told us. You know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Most of us know the prayer. It's not just like something that we say to kids to pray or something that we, we use for, for new Christians. I'll oh, just pray this prayer. I think as mature believers, we should still be praying this prayer. We should still use it. Jesus taught it for a reason, that we follow the model that he set. And there are some points in this booklet. You know, it helps us to connect with God relationally. Our Father in heaven, he's your Father. To hallow, run to his name and hallowed be your name. I'll give reverence to you, God, because you're awesome, you're great and you're holy. We pray his agenda first. Not God, bless me, bless me, get me there safely, help me win the lottery, I need a new car. No, but God, whatever you want. If you want me to walk, I'll walk. If you want me to be poor, I'll be poor. Whatever. Depend on him for everything. So to give us today our daily bread. Keep your heart right with God and people by forgiving us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Those that sin against us, man, what a, what a hard teaching for so many of us to grasp, this forgiveness thing. It's hard. Take your stand against the enemy and have faith in God's ability. Because he can. He's God. There's nothing he can't do. Even help us change the very town that we live in. Amen. So that's habit one. I've got five minutes left. For habit number two. Habit number two. Fellowship with other believers. God never intended for us to go through life alone. Throughout the Bible, we see the importance of being in community. In fact, authentic life change happens in the context of relationships. Doesn't it? Amen. Yeah? Yes. 
doesn't it? At the Hub Church, we believe that our church must grow larger and smaller at the same time. Yeah? I mean, we can be here and be like, oh, I love our church, it's small, I know everyone, I recognise everybody's face, I've got my seat, like, uh, you know, I can speak to the pastor whenever I want, I can go around his house and have dinner. I love all that, it's very intimate, it's a very close-knit family. But if we're to be church, then we're supposed to be getting a, a larger family, we're meant to be growing. And all right, whatever your, your thoughts are and your views are on mega churches or small churches or whatever, set all that aside because the biblical model is, is that more and more people get saved and more and more people meet in each other's homes. You're not going to get 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost coming round my living room. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, people. I know, like miracles happen and we could knock some walls through, but the neighbours won't like that very much. So, we need to go larger and smaller. So we want to see more people here on a Sunday morning, don't we? With our hands in the air and giving their lives to Christ. But of course, I want to see my house full on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night when people come round for Connect Group. Because for me personally, when I first got saved in this church, I was invited along to, to a, what they called small groups at the time, a Bible study around um, a guy's house. And that's where I got to meet great people like Ian and Matt. And we hung out and we, we had food together and we went deeper in the Bible. And then, of course, everybody got older and ran their own connect groups. And it's just not the same anymore. <laughs> but it's okay because people are meeting Jesus. And that's fine. But man, it, it helped and aided my development so much. And it still does. I have a connect group here on a Tuesday with the young people. And personally, I love it. We get to eat muffins. You know, we have cups of tea. Occasionally, we might go out together. I oh, know, it's crazy. We can just be friends and do this thing we call life together with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why are connect groups so important? Uh, I think I've said enough about that, but you know, they, they provide opportunities for Bible study. We talk about the, the Sunday message in our connect groups here at the Hub. You know, we get to go deeper, look at other scriptures that connect to the message. Uh, we, we, we get to spend time in fellowship with other people. We, you know, fellowship, funny word, we make friends. We make friends with people and we hang out and we get to know each other really well, whether you like it or not. Prayer, we would get to pray together. Because some of the things that you might not like about other people are the things that they're going through that are really tough and difficult. So we can pray about that. Uh, we can support each other. Because again, well, support, it, it's got a negative connotation, but it needn't be. Because do you know what? Things might be going awesome. We can still support each other in that. Man, I pray that if you set up your own business, it goes blooming marvellous. I really do. Because I want to be praying for that. And I want to see you prosper and succeed and do well. Because it's good to. And it's a witness to the world. And we can outreach. Because occasionally, like I said, we go out. And we're unashamed about talking about Jesus when we go to Weatherspoons on a Tuesday night, occasionally, you know. So what if people overhear our conversations and look at us with Bibles on the table and go, a bit weird, come and join us. We actually had that happen a couple of times. It was really weird, really funny at the same time. It was great, you know. I, I, still, I still know these people. And it, it, it's, yeah, I'll talk to you afterwards. So how do I get connected with a small group. Really easy, you know. There, there's not many groups in the church at the moment. As time goes on, this will become more relevant of a, a point. But just come and speak to me. Come and speak to Pastor Tony. You know, we'll point you in the right direction. And if you are geographically too far away from this area to attend a small group here, We'll try and facilitate a small group where you live. Because the local church isn't just this building. The local church is where you are. You're called to be in a place because God put you there to reach the people that you have around you. It's not our responsibility to reach out into your community. It's your responsibility. 
But we can help facilitate that by holding a connect group where you live and you can invite your friends to come to your house so that we can tell them all about Jesus. You don't have to commit to a connect group forever and ever. It's not like once you're in, you're in. You're never getting out. That could be really creepy. You might get stuck with people that you, you just, you, you really don't connect with. You know, chemistry in, in connect groups is really important, actually. You know, you need to be able to have conversation and bounce off each other and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you might join a connect group and be like, yeah, that one's not for me. Fine. Speak to us. We will facilitate a connect group somewhere else. It's not a problem. But you need to communicate with us for it to happen. So, just commit for a season. Just say, I'll, I'll go along for six weeks. You might not like them on week one, but by week six, you might be best mates, you know, <coughs> going out shopping for shoes. And in Connect Group, we experience life change. We actually really do. Um, uh, I, like I just said, my life radically changed as a part of being in a connect group in this church. I'm really, really thankful for the people that sacrificed their time and effort in order to aid me as I grew in my faith. So, so please, please get involved. Sunday is not enough, is it church? So we may need to sacrifice a short-term pleasure for a long-term gain. It might mean to be a part of a connect group, we don't watch Game of Thrones. Who'd watch Game of Thrones anyway? We're all Christians, right? But we might not watch EastEnders. Same principle applies. You know, <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. You know, Netflix and chill. No, let's go to connect group and chill. Yeah? It might require a bit of a sacrifice on your part. Your Wednesday nights might not look the same again. But great. If you're growing with Jesus, it's far better, isn't it? Yeah. Habit number three. We're getting through this now, aren't we? We are chugging along. Living a spirit-led life. Yes. Yeah. Living a spirit-led life. Having close relationships with other people is only a part of God's plan for our lives. He desires to be our most intimate friend. Amen. And this is facilitated through the Holy Spirit. So just so you know, guys, we're literally going to be five or ten more minutes. Okay. So who is the Holy Spirit? Ruach, a wind, a violent exhalation, a blast of breath. It's a great word, isn't it? A pneuma, a current of air, a blast of breath, a strong breeze. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is part of the Trinity, part of the Godhead. He is with the Father and Christ the Son. They were in perfect communion before any of this ever started. They didn't need this. They were all happy together. But God desires us. He desires a relationship with us. So therefore, he created us so that we can have a relationship with him through the Holy Spirit. The third person in the Trinity, like I just said. The Holy Spirit's role in our lives is he enables us to know God's comfort. When we're going through difficult times, we can turn to him. We can experience his love, his compassion on our lives. He can help us through some really difficult times. He's also there to convict us. That's not to make us feel guilty, but it's to convict us of our sin, to point out our errors, our flaws, our ways that are departing from that of the path of God. He empowers us to live with Christ-like character. It's only through the Spirit that we can truly know the Father. He guides us. He shows us the way. He nudges us in the right direction. And this happens all of the time. It could happen when you leave this place. You could be at home peeling your potatoes and he could just nudge you and say, man, think about that, that teaching today. Think about that verse you read this morning. Think about that quiet time you had with me yesterday. Think about what you could do. Think about where you could go. 
Think about the difference you could make. And he gives us the power to do it. He gives us the strength, the power with which to make those changes in our own lives, but also to stand that we might make a difference in the lives of others. The Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts. And I just want to say, next week, that is what it's going to be all about. Next week, I'm really excited about next week because I'm a nerd like that. But if you're not a nerd like that, then I still want to encourage you to come. Because next week, we'll be, we'll be having, taking a class that will help us to discover our spiritual gifts, our character, where we fit in the kingdom of God. And maybe you've done all this before, but maybe you're different this time. So maybe your answers won't be the same. Maybe you were a, a prayer warrior five years ago, and maybe you're a worship leader. Maybe you was a, a, a mercy person, gifts of mercy. Maybe this time it's going to be acts of help and service. Come next week, you'll find out. And the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual direction. How do I live a spirit-led life? have got to remove all the barriers. Remove all the barriers in our lives. Cast off anything that hinders and slows us down. Got to request the gift of the Holy Spirit. We ask God for him daily. Because the Holy Spirit leaks out of us, doesn't he? Amen. We need to keep asking to be filled again and again yes. with his spirit, with his power, with his love. We need to receive him by faith. You might become a Christian, you might ask for a refilling, and you might not feel any different. You might not physically see any difference just yet. But by seeing with faith, you will experience difference in time. You could probably look back on your life and say, I'm so different now than what I was two, three, five years ago. Because you received him by faith and now you're different and you see the result of that as time goes by. We need to relate to him daily. We talked about that as habits one and two. And we need to release our spiritual gifts with confidence. That means we need to serve people in order to release our gifts. They're not for us. We are not gifted to be blessed as look at me, look at me. We are given gifts to be blessed in that what can I do for you? How can I help? How can I serve? How can I sacrifice? How can I make a difference in your life, not just mine? So habit four. Habit four, the last one, you'll be glad to know, is giving of ourselves. Giving of ourselves. Okay, so there, the gospel is the ultimate demonstration of God's generous nature towards mankind. The Bible consistently teaches that God blesses us so that we may bless others. There are three areas of giving. We give of our time, our most precious resource as human beings. We can make more money. We can accumulate more stuff. We can get more friends. We can get a different house. But our time, once it's spent, is spent. How wisely are you spending your time? We can give of our talents, the things that we're good at, the things that we are gifted in. How can I help? What do I have that will bless you? And we can give of our treasure. As we spoke about during the offering time, we give of what we have, our, our gold and our silver and our bronze, because we believe in the vision. Because we want to see God's kingdom come. Amen. We should tithe, but do not neglect the more important things Jesus spoke about. It's your heart that really matters. Whether you've got half an hour or 30 hours in a week to give, doesn't matter. If that's what you've got to give, that's what you've got to give. And we appreciate at the Hub Church, wherever you're able to give of your time, your talent, of your treasure. 
Because without you, none of this is possible. Without you sacrificing of yourselves, we can't have church. We can't be church. It requires every single one of us to really make a difference, to really make a change. You might just be a small cog in a big machine, or you might be a great big cog in a small machine. It doesn't matter. You serve in the capacity that God has graced you to serve in. And that is fine by us. What is not fine by us is when you become a spiritual consumer and not a spiritual contributor. When you have gifts, when you have time, when you have treasure and you don't use them and you just come because oh, we sing some nice songs and we hear some nice teaching and it's great. If you're a baby, that's fine. But like Pastor said last week, Paul encourages us to start eating meat and not be being fed milk. So if you have something to give, don't hold on to it. You won't be blessed that way. And it's not because we want you to like serve us. I don't, I don't need, we don't need you to make me a cup of tea or coffee. I don't need the floor to be clean to come and worship God. But by serving, you're blessed. By giving, we are indeed blessed. Because the benefits of giving are we get to draw closer to God. Giving is the antidote to materialism. The accumulation of stuff a very real problem in our world. Netflix and chill, man. Is it necessary? I don't know. Giving strengthens our faith because what we do and how we operate, we get to see the change in other people's lives. I don't want to put myself as an example again, but I'm sure the pastors are glad that I am where I am now because of the sacrifices they made for so many years. Not to big myself up. Sorry, don't get me wrong. But their sacrifice, only their sacrifice and the grace of God has enabled me to be in a place where I've got a great family, <coughs> where I enjoy life, and where I've got an intimate relationship with my Heavenly Father. I'm not doing that by myself. I couldn't. Couldn't possibly. And giving is an investment in eternity. Man, I don't want us to go away from this place just thinking, heard this before, it's great, thank you very much, ticked off class 201. I want us to, to understand that being a part of this church, being a part of the kingdom of God, it will only happen if we're willing, cheerful, sacrificial and expectant as believers here in this place. And if you're not a Christian here in this place, I want to encourage you. You might have heard all this and said, how does this apply to my life? How do these spiritual disciplines make any sort of difference to me? I'm not a spiritual person. But I want to invite you to accept Jesus into your life because only then will you experience life to its full. Jesus came that we might have life, to have abundant life and to have it to the full. And if you don't have Jesus in your life, you are missing out on the fullness of what life was intended to be for you. You have a purpose for your life. There is a plan for your life. And if you're not giving yourself to our Heavenly Father and saying, Lord, take control of my life, we will waste this life and find that we've been climbing a ladder up the wrong building our entire time on this earth. And I don't want that for any of us, for any of you. I want you to be a healthy, strong, vibrant person, a human being made in the image and likeness of God, fulfilling the very plan of God in your life. Amen? Amen. Let's make real change 
in this town, in this community, in our nation, and in the world. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I, I thank you, God, for bringing this teaching in our, in our way, this growth track, God. We, we thank you, God, that this process will help us just to grow in our faith, to grow in our understanding of who you are and of who we are and how we are to serve in a greater capacity to see a bigger change happen than what we could ever do on our own. I thank you, God. So I just pray that by the power of your spirit, you empower us, you enable us, you give us the courage, the strength and the capacity to go out of this building today and to really make a difference in the life of someone this week. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Fantastic. Hallelujah.